Hi there guys, this is Max with Family Piano Co. And <clears throat> today we have a real special grand piano for you guys. We have a Steinway Model L. Now this guy um, was originally made back in 1928 and this exact one was fully rebuilt in 2011. Now a little bit of the history of the Model L because if you've been researching brand new Steinway grands, uh, you'll have noticed that they actually are not making Steinway Model L's anymore. Um, and the reason for that, um, it goes back to 1900 when they started their uh, Model O, which we actually have a Model O right over there that I'm going to show real briefly. Um, but essentially, they're just about the same piano, um, right around the same size. This one's right around 510. Um, and that's a really great size. Uh, it tends to be one of the most popular sizes right around six foot uh, for in-home use. And the reason for that tends to be right around six foot, you just get a really good sense of balance. So you have balance, of course, referring to how your bass range kind of interacts with your treble. So right around six foot, just the geometry of how the strings are gonna be laid out just makes for very good balance. You know, as you get bigger than six foot, generally you're gonna expand in your bass range the most. Um, for a lot of players, that's super important. They want a very strong bass. But right around six foot is right around the uh, size length that things just become very well balanced. So the Model O ran from 1900 to 1923 and then it got replaced with an updated design, the Model L. And the Model L kind of reigned supreme as one of the most popular Steinway models, um, basically from 1923 all the way to 2005 when it was discontinued. And they actually brought back the Model O. Um, so since then, the Model O has been produced both in the New York factories and in the uh, Hamburg, Germany factories. So you just get a really, really nice piano. Now this piano has been rebuilt, um, which to explain kind of the difference between rebuilding and then the work that we do in our store, which is mostly refurbishment work. So to rebuild a piano, you're talking extensive part replacement. Um, so the difference between, you know, what we do and a rebuilding is going to be, you know, really Think of it as getting the works in terms of uh, you know just parts replaced. This is where you're going to be taking it, you know, to a basically a place where they're going to rebuild it, whether it's a factory, a workshop, um, and it's going to get fully taken apart. Um, so this exact one, there's a lot of different levels of rebuilding, and basically it goes into just how much uh, what your budget is for uh, you know restoring or rebuilding. So generally, an instrument like this. Um, so what they had done is they went ahead and first of all replaced our key tops which 1928 original would have been ivory keys. Um, these are not ivory key tops. They do have a really really nice sense of grip though. Um, but usually a hundred year old ivory, you know, it can be yellowed, it can be a lot of chips on it. So a lot of folks just want to go ahead and replace their ivory keys with something that's just going to last a lot longer and will just do really well. Um, so another thing that got you know done on this piano is a refinishing job, which that's mostly going to be the outside cabinet. I'm going to show you guys more closely, but that's why this thing is so you know, beautiful for 1928. Um, is because it's been refinished. So it just is gonna look very vivid. The colors are very vivid. Um, you know, there's no scuffing that you might find on, you know, 100 year old instrument, of course, it's gonna be knocked into, um, things like that, unless it's just been incredibly lucky, you know, you're normally gonna have some problems with the case uh, once you reach that age. So another thing that, you know, got replaced is, and probably one of the most important things is gonna be the inside action mechanisms. Um, you can imagine there's about 10,000 parts inside of a piano. So what they're doing there um, is they are, you know, those action parts, imagine 100 years of piano players just playing the piano um, and really, really putting a lot of use onto it. You know, those parts are wooden parts. Um, and over the years, they're gonna dilapidate, especially when being used to such an extent. And I, I have no way of knowing how much this exact piano got used throughout those years, um, but it's safe to assume 
it was probably bought to be used and in those 100 years received plenty of use. Um, so the action, they actually replaced it with a Renner action, uh, which is a super high quality German made action. Um, and it plays incredibly well. So action parts have been replaced. Um, the tuning block and the tuning pins have been replaced as well, which this is really good because it goes into one of the primary concerns about purchasing an older instrument is going to be tuning stability. How well will it hold its tunes? So if you replace the tuning block, replace the tuning pins, essentially you're gonna have an instrument that can hold its tune like a much, much newer piano. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. As well as they did a complete restringing of the instrument as well. So it just, uh, you know, a fresh set of strings of course, over the years, um, oxidation occurs on the strings. So you can imagine when these, when it was brought to be rebuilt with almost 90-year-old uh, strings, they were probably heavily oxidized. And you can visually see that because instead of the beautiful copper strings, you're going to see, you know, they're going to look much more brown. Essentially, oxidation is rusting, so it'll look rusty. Um, and you can imagine that when you know strings are covered in a coating of rust they're not nearly as free to vibrate. So the sound begins to deaden a bit. Now you can play, you know, let's say they never restrung this. You can play it and it will sound good, but it won't sound anywhere near as good as a fresh set of strings will that can just vibrate to their fullest extent. Um, so, you know, definitely a good move. Restringing a piano alone generally runs around three thousand ish dollars um so usually on a high quality instrument like this it will be done much less likely to find that on you know older upright pianos for example are pretty infrequently restrung um, so a lot of times just the cost analysis doesn't exactly make sense but usually a beautiful steinway like this especially one that holds a lot of sentimental, uh, sentimental value is going to be restrung. It just makes sense to do it. Um, so I kind of want to show the condition from better angles here. Because um, it is just a very beautiful instrument. By the way, real quick, this is our Steinway Model O over here. This is a 1910 with mostly original parts. A much, uh, it has been rebuilt, but to a much like less extensive degree. Um, than this guy here, which got rebuilt in 2011. And it received, I would say, close to a full restoration. Um, you know, the parts in the action that got replaced are Renner parts, which are extremely good. But I know for a lot of folks, it's a big deal to have uh, all Steinway parts. Um, you know, personally, as a player, you know, you, you kind of can feel the difference, but Renner actions are absolutely amazing as well. Um, so I'm going to say there is a difference, but in terms of quality, both are extremely good quality. Um, so you can see just the finish, beautiful. They also repainted the cast iron plate, which is just a really nice touch on a rebuilt piano. To kind of compare, this guy real quick is um, a Charles Steef uh, Grand from actually the same exact year, 1928. And it got rebuilt in the 1990s. And, but that cast iron plate was not repainted. This guy was, and it just adds an extremely nice touch to the piano. Um, looking at the soundboard and the bridges, if you're ever considering purchasing you know, a rebuilt Steinway, some good questions to have um, are, how's the soundboard looking? Now this one I've checked previously and it is in very good shape, which is just lovely to have. Um, obviously a crack in the soundboard um, is going to be you know, usually a hindrance to the sound of the piano. I mean, there are exceptions, like if it's a minor crack in a dead zone of the soundboard, it doesn't matter so much, but it will probably impact the value of the instrument a little bit. Um, but really, you know, the biggest things you're looking for are, hey, is it, you know, a crack? Can I see separation in the crack? Can I feel, you know, that the different surfaces of the wood have raised? Because, um, you know, that's going to imply if there's space in that crack, that's impacting your sound. Um, so really lovely condition of the soundboard. The next big thing um, is going to be the bridges over here. 
you have your treble bridge and you have your bass bridge and it's that wooden structure right there. And its goal is to hold those strings in their exact place, not let them move for about a hundred years. Um, so any issues with the stability of that bridge is real bad news for the piano. This one, the bridge is looking really good, but you would be looking for any visible cracks on the bridge um, or the beginnings of cracks, you know, will, will imply, hey, they could grow in the future unless they've been professionally treated. Same with soundboard cracks. Um, you know, it's common to find maybe one or two on an instrument this old, but if they've been professionally treated, then at least you know they're not going to expand past how, what they already are. Um, but the bridge here looking real, real good. Um, you can just really appreciate how thick the rim is here. Of course, the rim on any piano is a very important part of the sound production. Just overall, very thick, strongly built instrument. Another nice thing this guy has, you see this here, a lot of folks um, you know, might think that this is a player system, but actually you see it says power water pads. This is a damp chaser system, which there's a little box on the bottom of this. It's kind of hard to see, um, but it's full of water. And the goal is to create a micro environment right around the soundboard to keep um, to keep the soundboard's you know mini atmosphere at the same exact humidity level, because wood, you know, it came from a tree, and its point is to intake humidity. Um, so that's that's one of the things any you know organic material is going to do and will be affected by. It'll move around because of that. Um, so the goal is to keep the humidity as constant as possible so there's as little movement or warping of the wood as possible and that prevents cracks and keeps it sounding at its best. Now another thing to note about the soundboard is just the quality of the wood. This is a major reason why someone might want to rebuild one of these Steinways as opposed to uh, as opposed to you know, purchasing a different new instrument that would be at a you know similar price to this guy. This guy's right at thirty thousand. You could purchase you know a brand new instrument. Um, it might not live up to the same quality, but in terms of the character and original you know authenticity of the tone, it won't quite have that because this wood quality is just excellent and it's been aged, and you just really can't beat that. Um, you know, a brand new piano can have a really beautiful factory fresh kind of sound, but in terms of authenticity, character, um, it's you're not going to uh, you're not going to find a brand new piano that is more unique or characterful than something that has just been very beautifully restored. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play for you um, some Mendelssohn, which I think will go well with the sound nature of this piano, which is just very warm, full of character, um, and very relaxing. I, I'm going to play uh, Mendelssohn's Songs Without Words, which I think will be a perfect match for this Steinway Model L. So here we go.
this instrument is just so much fun to play on. I mean, it's highly responsive. Uh, the sound is just incredible. It, it's really a sound experience that you, just, you can't get that from a brand new piano. It takes character, it takes maturing of the wood, um, and it just plays beautifully. You know, I thought I had while I was playing that was that this piano, I'll have to run the math on this just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's closer in age to the date that Mendelssohn was writing Songs Without Words than it is to our time today. And yet it's here and plays this beautifully, sounds this beautifully, and you know, it was restored to look this beautifully. Um, so it really goes into these restored instruments. You're both owning like a piece of history as well as just an incredibly well-functioning instrument. Um, with the sound quality, you're just not going to get from a brand new piano or from uh, you know something you know just something different you know but brand new. You're you're not going to get that. So I, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, even you know if you're not considering this exact piano in front of me, whether uh, you know when you're considering rebuilt Steinways um, or considering you know going for something different, there's a lot of ways that you can spend your money on a piano for a lot of different results, but going for an excellently rebuilt piano. I mean, a brand new version of this uh, would be a Model O, as I talked about, but uh, is gonna be about triple the price. Um, so you know, it's, it's just incredible the value that you can get from a really nice restored Steinway Grand. So thank you so much for watching. Um, again, I'm Max uh, here at Family Piano Co. And if you like these kinds of videos, just learning more about pianos um, or just classical music um, or all kinds of music, uh, you know, we're here to both educate um, and just, you know, really support the piano community, uh, hopefully worldwide. So, you know, please like and subscribe our videos and, you know, that you know, encourages us to keep on going. Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you want to reach out to me directly, max at familypiano.com. Um, I'm more than happy to you know, answer any questions or assist people how I can. Thank you so much.